this is the restriction re restriction enzyme recognition site for BSA1. It looks a little bit complicated. It looks a little bit difficult to work with, but it's actually very useful. BSA1 has a six base pair recognition sequence, GGTCTC, and then it cuts outside of that recognition sequence at any four bases. And that's a very useful, very explosive property. So let me show you. If I make a plasmid, I make a plasmid, and I insert the BSA1 regions into it. So I have my four base pairs on one side that will be cut, and we'll label that one. So that's any four base pairs, but they're going to be complementary with ones always. So it could be ATCC, it could be GG. AT doesn't really matter, but it will be complementary with every site that I label one. Then I'll have my restriction recognition restriction enzyme recognition site. And then on the other side, I'll have the same. So I'll have four base pairs. Um, that can be any four base pairs, but they're going to be always complementary with I'm going to label it two. And then I'll have my restriction enzyme recognition site. And then to complete the circularity of the plasmid, I'll just fill, a, fill the gap in. So this is a plasmid compatible with Golden Gate sequence, with Golden Gate cloning. And Golden Gate uses this BSA1 enzyme and other type 2S enzymes that have the same sort of cutting outside of their recognition sequence. And it's very interesting. And it's very interesting because. <coughs> If I put BSA1 in with this plasmid, I get out a very pretty result. I get my nice linearized plasmid, and on one side, I'll have a sticky end that's complementary with one. And on the other side, I'll have a sticky end that's complementary with number two. And Nothing in the middle, because the middle bit is excised by BSA1, including the restriction enzyme recognition sequence. So if we get rid of this GGC, uh, GGTCTC, then we have no scar. Unlike traditional restriction digestion ligation, which requires you to, because the restriction enzyme cuts within the sequence, you have to have the scar. Golden Gate allows you to remove the scar. And this is very important because in synthetic biology, the less scar you have, the more control you have over what the DNA does. Now, let me show you how we can incorporate this into our insert as well. So first I'll rub out all of this. So how do we design an insert compatible with Golden Gate? Well, in a very, very similar way. So if I um, design my insert, I'll have whatever I want inside of it. And then I'll have my four base pair sticky end complementary sequences. So on this side, it will be a one. And again, that's complementary with the one over here. And on the other side, I'll have Going through with number two. And then my restriction enzyme sequences will be past that outside of the insert. I'm also going to add in spacer regions, which are four base pairs. I usually use GATC. It doesn't matter. It just helps the restriction enzyme to bind better to the uh, recognition sequence because it's not right on the end of the DNA. Now, what happens? when I add BSA1 into this mixture? Well, we get a very, very pretty result. So when I add BSA1, the plasmid is linearized as before, and the insert is made to have sticky ends. And the restriction enzyme recognition sequences and the spacers get lost. So we're left, and then they can re-ligate their complementary. So we're left with a very pretty plasma that is completely scarless that looks like this. 
plasmid, backbone, our complementary sequences one and two, and our insert. And you may say, well, this doesn't look scarless because you have these one and two sites, which are still four base pairs, but actually they can be any four base pairs. So they can just be the base pairs that were on your plasmid anyway. So it is scarless because if you choose the right four base pairs that would sit there anyway, then there's no remaining uh, janky DNA that shouldn't be there. But Golden Gate doesn't end here because Golden Gate can be used to assemble many fragments. So let's design some more inserts. And for this purpose, I'm going to change the numbering system to colors. So on my plasmid, I'm going to have my uh, my recognition sequence and the bit of DNA in there before. But on the five prime end, I'm going to have a blue or base pairs. Again, it's going to be any four base pairs. But whatever the case be, they will be complementary with blue. And on the other side, I'm going to have green. So this will be any four base pairs, but it's always complementary with whatever I draw as a green four base pairs. Now, if I redesign my insert, I'll keep this side blue, but the other side will be red. And then I'm going to I'm going to call this insert uh, number one. I'm then going to make another insert, which will look much the same. So it will have the same spacer, same recognition sequence. It's a different insert, so this maybe number one is a promoter, number two is your uh, coding sequence. Uh, and then the four base pair complementary sequence that I use, I'm going to use red on the five prime end, and I'm going to use black on the three prime end. And then I'm going to do this again. So I'm going to have my third insert. And again, spacers and restriction enzyme recognition site. And then for my four base pair regions, I'm going to have black on the five prime and I'm going to have green I'm going to have green on the three prime now what happens when I add BSA1 to this well we get a very very good result I will draw a very big plasma for this because there's a lot of fragments so that's my backbone plasmid. That's from this. And after it's digested with BSA1, we can see that it will have a blue sticky end and it will have a green sticky end on the other side. Now you might be able to see where this is going. So when all my, uh, when all my inserts are digested in the same reaction mixture by the same restriction enzyme, the only one that will be able to uh, ligate the blue is insert one. So insert one will assemble in the correct orientation. Yeah. And then at the end of insert one, there'll be a red sticky end. And the only thing that can assemble a red sticky end is another red sticky end, which we find in number two. So then insert two will ligate in the correct orientation. And on the other side of two is a black sticky end. And the only thing in the reaction mixture that can do with a black, so maybe it's GCTT, the only other GCTT in the reaction mixture is insert three. And then insert three has a green sticky end and our plasmid backbone has a green sticky end. So they really like that. And now we have fully assembled a plasmid with three inserts, all in the correct orientation, one pot reaction mixture. Don't even have to purify out the enzyme because the final product 
that we want has no restriction enzyme sites. These restriction enzyme sites do float around the mixture. They do re-ligate, but they are completely unstable. There's no origins of replication. So you don't have to worry about them during transformation. So Golden Gate produces a very, very pretty result. In general, uh, Golden Gate is preferable for more fragments and for shorter fragments. Gibson is preferable for fewer fragments that are longer.